viewers, thank you very much. Uh, good morning. My name is Dr. Washira Murage from the Savannah Hospital. Um, been receiving uh, so many messages from our viewers and you have found out that there are so many uh, questions and concerns about uterine fibroids. And this morning we just want to highlight a few things about uh, uterine fibroids. So you're going to discuss uh, what causes uterine fibroids, uh, what, are, what are the symptomatology and signs and symptoms of uterine fibroids, and then how do we treat uterine fibroids and you're going to respond to a few questions that we have seen sent to us about the concerns of uterine fibroids. So uterine fibroids are just growths in the uterus and those are things that grow in the uterus that's why they are called uterine fibroids they're also called myomas they respond to estrogens so they grow in the reproductive age group from age 15 and 49 um, because they depend on estrogens. Now, we do not know exactly what causes uterine fibroids, but we know that um, uterine fibroids also run in families. So you have a family of uterine fibroids, they tend to come. They are more common in nariparas. Nariparas, I mean someone who is a bit you know, 30 years and above with no children, or low parity. Low parity means that they have few children. Obesity and smoking also contribute to uterine fibroids. Uterine fibroids are the earliest of the one to say they are not cancerous because there are so many people who get uterine fibroids and they panic, thinking that, oh, I have a malignancy, have a cancer. They have never being cancerous. The only concern that uh, gives us the suspicion of uh, malignancy, even if the radiology tells us about uterine fibroids, is in postmenopause because of one variety of cancer of the uterus called sarcoma. They resemble so much uh, with uterine fibroids. So in such cases, you are normally very, very careful and you must rule out a sarcoma. Even if you are told about uterine fibroids, uh, in the postmenopausal period. Uh, fibroids are supposed to disappear in the postmenopausal period. Most of the time is menorrhagia. Menorrhagia is heavy periods. There also can be pain, painful periods called dysmenorrhea. So patients with uterine fibroids will have heavy periods, periods coming in clots, but the periods are regular. Uh, the time of periods, the duration of periods, the periods become very, very heavy in clots and sometimes they do pain. So those are two. Number three, uterine fibroids can demonstrate what we call pressure symptoms. If you remember the anatomy, and here we have a diagram of the uterus. In front here is the bladder and behind here we have the, uh, the intestines. So if there is a large growth, on the uterus, then you find that it depresses on the bladder and therefore the urine keeps coming. They feel like they want to pee, but when they go to pee, there's no urine coming out. Why? Because the uterine fibroids are pressurizing on the bladder. They can also do the same behind so that you have the intestines being pressed and therefore they feel like they are constipated, they want to go for wrong call, but it's not coming out. They're called pressure symptoms. Of course, they can do other uh, you know, they can, they can even cause uh, intestinal obstruction because of pressing on the intestines. They can also press on other organs like the appendix and other organs. So those, all those are labeled Adam um, pressure symptoms. Number four is cosmetic. The fibroids can be as huge and therefore the woman will look like they're pregnant, they look like they have a tummy, and imagine a lady with a tummy. So when uterine fibers cause such things, then they're taken seriously and they need treatment. Of course, there are other things that can, that can be the symptomatology for uterine fibroids, which are indirect, like infertility. Some uterine fibroids uh, cause infertility. Others may cause things like, you know, frequent urinary tract infections because of the pressing of the bladder. So, but the, the first four that you have mentioned are the earliest concerns when you get them 
think about you trying fibroids. The most important uh, thing about diagnosis of uterine fibroids is the history. How is the presentation? The heavy periods. Are the periods regular? And they're just heavy between the, 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 the tenor of the periods. How is the pain? Is there a growth over there? The lady is saying they're having infertility. How is the infertility? How are the tubes? Is there a growth in the uterus? But the commonest, of course, is heavy periods and a growth or a mass on the lower pelvis. Those are the first telltale signs about uterine fibroids. When you're now convinced about the history, then you go to physical examination. The physical examination starts with doing a general examination, check out for anemia because uterine fibroids, when they do bleed and the bleeding is in clots, then they get to have low Hb, low blood level. So check for check for that one, then go and examine the abdomen. And first examination, you check on the tummy, see whether there are any growths or any masses, then you can do a good vaginal examination where you start by doing uh, an inspection and then you do a speculum examination. At that point, if the lady has never done a pap smear, it would be a perfect time to do a, a pap smear. If there's any discharge, then you can do microscopy on that discharge. And then you do now a bimanual palpation. The doctor, you put in the fingers, you feel the cervix, feel how the uterus is moving and be able to have an idea the size of the fibroids, are they fixed, are they mobile, then you can be able to describe what you feel. From there then you can go for radiology and radiology the gold standard is an ultrasound, it can be a trans vaginal ultrasound, it can be a trans abdominal ultrasound and those ones are going to give you an idea of what kind of fibroids that you're having. Sometimes you can do an MRI, especially when you want to get deeper details about the uterine fibroids. You can do an MRI of the pelvis. They'll be able to tell you the extent of the fibroids. If they touch the endometrium, and then they, you are able now to plan for management. Of course, management you can divide into two. Of course, if uh, the lady has anemia, then of course you'll be able to correct that anemia. If there is infection, you correct that infection. If there are other associated problems, then you can sort them out. The management of uterine fibroids depends on the lady. What is the age? What is the, are they looking out for, for babies? Or are they done with the babies? All those age plus their fertility goals is what now tells you the kind of treatment that you are going to offer uh, the lady. Of course, it's a, it's, it's a right for every woman to be able to retain the uterus. But sometimes you are forced to just let the uterus go because of what problems it is causing. But the options of treatment are many and I'll be able to enumerate them. Number one is conservative. The beginning of our, of our talk today, we said uterine fibroids are not malignancy. There is no emergency in treating uterine fibroids unless you're bleeding too much, you're anemic, maybe the heart is being affected, you are so sick, then it can be an emergency. But even then, you always start by, by correcting the situation at hand before you go for the definitive treatment. So that's conservative management. You can just leave the fibroids. Yes, you have seen their fibroids, but they are not causing any problem. No menorrhagia, there's no pain, no pressure symptoms. They are not as big. So, and then you discuss with the client and then you're able to say, let's wait a bit, which is agreeable. Number two is medical treatment. And medical treatment can either be injections or they can be tabs to swallow. That kind of treatment in medical is just for a time, is to buy time. For example, if a lady is about 48, 49, they're almost going to menopause. And we know that fibroids at menopause normally will shrink. So you can give medication as you wait, you know, for the lady to slip into menopause, you shrink the fibroids, the symptomatology like bleeding is reduced, and therefore you give time to avoid surgery. You can also do what is called arterial 
ebolization. And arterial ebolization um, is a modality that is done by interventional radiologists. And the interventional radiologists, all what they have to do is to be able to look at the blood circulation going to the fibroids, and then they can be able to ebolize them, kind of dry them, kind of burn them in quotes, and therefore you deny the uterine fibroids blood, and therefore they are going to shrink. After arterial ebolization, then you can go to something called HIFU. This is laser treatment, and HIFU is whereby uh, the fibroids are located, you can use MRI to correctly define the location of the fibroids, the number of fibroids, and therefore now you can use the laser treatment. It's like burning that fibroid. You have seen welding, sort of something like that. We are now you use laser and you're able to destroy the fibroids. And all those modalities are available. Then number four is the surgical management. And surgical management is divided into two. You can either remove the fibroids, a process called my myomectomy, or you can remove the uterus, a process called hysterectomy. So all those processes are available. And myomectomy, uh, hysterectomy can also be closed, laparoscopic, it's also available. Or you can do open surgery to remove the fibroids. But generally, young patients desirous of fertility, then we tend to do myomectomy. If they have desired family size and maybe they are about like 35 years and above or they are about, then you may discuss hysterectomy. Then after that is the care after the surgery. And that's very, very important. You just need to advise on early ambulation. Let's remember when you have these pelvic surgeries, we can get cloth that come to our chest. So let's ambulate. Let's keep moving around. Let's move our feet so that you can have good circulation. You can have other complications, for example, losing a lot of blood, like in myomectomy. So sometimes you there is that preparation for transfusion. You need to optimize the hemogram, the hemoglobin, the amount of blood. So that you have more than 10 when you want to do these operations. But post-operative ambulation is okay. Within about two months, uh, three months, the sky is healed, the uterus is healed. And if they're desirous of having a baby, then they can start discussing about the baby. Of course, hysterectomy, many ladies have come asking, what are the complications? If my, if my uterus, what happens? There's no problem. Because normally you do not remove the ovaries. You just remove the uterus where these fibroids are. And these are the kind of fibroids you are talking about. You can see this one is called subserous. Yes, the fibroid that is on top. You can have intramural within the wall. And you can have other small ones inside. And these ones are called submucus. These ones inside are the ones that cause a lot of bleeding. Yeah, the submucous fibroids cause a lot of bleeding. The subserous tend to grow quite big because they are unlimited. So, um, so many people will ask, what happens after I remove my uterus? You remove the uterus, most of the time these days you're removing the uterus plus the tubes. So you find plus the tubes you have removed, and therefore, that area that is left, of course, is occupied by the intestines. And life does not change in terms of being intimate because the ovaries are left to function. So there is normally no problem. And of course, if you look at the vagina, and because when you are removing the uterus, you remove the cervix most of the time because you are in the zone of cancer of the cervix. Some ladies prefer and say, why remove the my cervix? and it has no problem. So we can consider to do what is called a subtotal hysterectomy. So you leave the cervix alone. Of course, the cervix has a, contribu a contribution in intimacy, but there are other organs around there, the vagina, the bathroom cyst that can also help in lubrication. So there is no fear as to the effect. And the vagina is normally not affected in terms of length, in terms of anatomy, and therefore those ladies post-hysterectomy should be able to enjoy uh, their intimacy without any problem. Yes, as long as in the reproductive age group, then uh, fibroids can always come back after their removal. But that should not worry you. It's just an issue of monitoring, discussing with the doctor, 
what are your goals uh, in terms of fertility and those kind of things. There's nothing you can do to prevent fibroids from coming. Yes, some fibroids can cause infertility, like the ones inside, the other fibroids that can be intramural and near the opening of the tube, and therefore they can block the tubes and cause infertility. Others ask, do fibroids, can fibroids cause cancer? Can they be cancer? We are saying fibroids cannot cause cancer. They are not cancerous at all. We are not sure. But we do think that lifestyle changes, you know, um, uh, obesity, what we eat, what we are, you know, smoking, all those lifestyle changes that, that have happened now to engulf the whole world have an inclination into the number of uterine fibroids. So treatment for uterine fibroids, I summarized, is available. And once you get uterine fibroids, you should not panic. There's no single woman with no fibroid. What matters is that some will have very small fibroids, others will have very big fibroids, others will have many fibroids, others will have fibroids that are outside, others in the wall, others inside. But most women have uterine fibroids. And once you are diagnosed with uterine fibroids, there's no panic, you're not going to lose your uterus. You just have a candid discussion with your doctor and look into your whole uh, journey, uh, woman journey, and see what you have and discuss what things to look out for. And therefore, you'll be taken care of and you'll be able to enjoy your womanhood, have the children you need. Fibroids are treatable. I would wish all women to understand about uterine fibroids in terms of the symptomatology. Let us understand at any time you have heavy periods more than uh, we normally get. Any time we feel like there's something swollen, any time we feel like we are peeing many times, let us go check for uterine fibroids. And once diagnosed, there's no panic. The technology is available in terms of treatment like we have outlined. And there is each treatment for each woman. For more information and treatment for uterine fibroids, Please get me at the Savannah Hospital, Upper Hill Mara Road, or you can get me at the, the CBD uh, facility, which is on Kenyatta Avenue, Pioneer House. It's called Savannah Healthcare. My number is 0722764545. You're going to get me, and I'll be able to attend to you either virtually or I'll be able to give you an appointment to come for better insights about the treatment and management of uterine fibroids. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.